All right, so one of the questions I get a lot is why did I buy this 50 foot steel sailboat? Why see it steel? Why didn't I go with the production boat? What What is the appeal? So I'm gonna answer a few of those questions today. First things is steel is, is easier to work with in cold climates hot climates, humid climates. Um, aluminum and steel, you can weld in pretty much any temperature, any humidity, as long as steel's prepped right, stuff like that. So it, ease of maintenance and ease of doing any type of adjustment or I would say modification. If I wanna add, you know, dinghy davits or, or, or all aluminum or steel bimini or, you know, dodger, I could do that without doing much work. Where glass, not only do you have to reinforce it right, you have to have proper temperatures, you know, proper supplies. Let's say I'm in the middle of nowhere. I, I carry steel plate on my on my ship at, at the moment. I have steel plate in the hull just because you never know when you need it. I mean, if I'm in a, if I'm at a a boatyard like this and they don't have steel for me. I mean, usually a boatyard has some steel laying around, but if they don't have it, I have it on hand. But if you're in the middle of nowhere and you can't find epoxy or resins, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. You're waiting until you can get a shipment in, you're paying whatever whatever they want to charge you, and it's it's just a headache. Another thing is, is I live in, right now I'm currently in in Ketchikan, Alaska. It's southeast Alaska. It's it's cold. It's not like northern Alaska cold, but it's definitely cold. And in in colder climates, when you're sailing around, you 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 can hit ice. You can you, you know if you're in a cove during the winter time, you can get frozen in. You can hit a log. There's you know whales, killer whales. You know those are causing issues in in Spain area. But with a steel hole, you can. It doesn't, you know, you can take a hit, you can run aground, you're not going to start taking on water immediately. You can hit a reef. There's lots of, I'd say, pluses to having a steel hole versus a fiberglass hole. And that's, you know, kind of what I was looking at. So when I went to, when I was first looking at these boats, I was looking at uh, Genos and Benetos. And I found I found a couple. I you know made offers on a couple, looked at them, and I, I kind of was looking for anything newer than 2010. I wanted something newer. I wanted something that maybe all the equipment on it wasn't so old. So you, everything from your winches to your lines to your rigging is only 10, 13 years old. I actually kind of didn't want something like this in the beginning. Um, but as I started to look and, and pricing things out, um, this, this vessel in particular, it had a, you know, it had a dinghy, you know, had a Honda outboard motor, had a safety raft, all of your safety equipment, had all kinds of, you know, literally all your life vests and all your USCG stuff. So some of these other boats, like the Genos I was looking at, you you spend one hundred and twenty eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars and you don't you don't get any of that equipment with you you don't get any of the you know you then you, your starting price is one hundred and twenty hundred and sixty grand and then you got to buy all your your equipment your life raft your you know life vest jock lines you know anything really and so I was taking all that into I would say consideration whenever I was looking at boats but so when I um I actually was trying to buy a Genoa 349 a 2017 I made an offer on it and um I, I looked at it the guy wanted 139,000 I offered 125,000 and when I went to look at the vessel it was it was underwhelmingly small you know it was the the owner's version so you had the the single bed and then you had the little garage next to the bathroom, and then you had the the V berth up front, and it just seemed like 
But once again, I'd be spending 125 grand. I then have to add all the other equipment on it. And I felt like I have two dogs and a girlfriend. I felt like it wasn't going to be enough space. So I started to look for bigger things. I looked, I was looking at, you know, 40 foot Genos, 40 foot Benetos, and they were all in 160, 170, 180 grand, depending on, you know, what the layout and what it came with. So that's what I was looking at. And I looked at a good, I think it was a 2009, uh, 419 or 409 or something like that. It was a 41 foot Genos, is the, the eye. And it was nice. I was actually really, really planning on buying that vessel before I got into this one. It was just, it was a hundred and I think it was $165,000. It just, when you think about costs, I was, you know, I'm using these, this as a, a liveaboard here in Ketchikan. And whenever you think about cost, like your, your, your payment, let's say you're not buying it outright, you're getting a loan your payment on 160 grand was just way more, you know, it kind of held you down to needing a job and, and needing more stuff. You can't really go traveling right away. You can't go cruising. So just all these little things were kind of put into perspective when I was looking at the boats. And when I looked at this, I kind of, I kind of shied away from immediately. I told the people, no, I wasn't interested. It was too old. It was very in bad, poor condition. I think I threw them a low ball, like $25,000 offer. And they kind of scoffed, you know, this particular vessel was just dropped from 110 to, uh, I think $99,000. And, um, he purchased this for 160 and he, uh, replaced all the standing rigging and all the sales, uh, in 2017 for the cost of right around $40,000, 45,000 bucks. And, it, some of those things are good. Some of those things are bad. I mean, he, he replaced the sales in 2017, which at this point, six years ago, and he never used the vessel. So, I mean, the sales could literally be ruined or, you know, at least in ill repair. So I actually physically haven't even opened the main cell yet. I, you know, I've been in a position to where I really can't. So... I, that's just some of the things when I was, you know, looking at this boat in particular was some of the stuff could be, need a lot more repair. All, all your water tanks, your electronics, your winches, your blocks, everything really needs to be looked at more carefully on a vessel like this. So I started to do the numbers, do the math. And I was like, you know, I could, I could save a hundred 110 120 grand buying something like this and it's bigger it's bigger it's steel it's i don't know to me it had more value more character more of what i wanted also it's got a pilot house you can steer from inside the vessel we're in alaska we're in ketchikan it rains it's cold you can you can be comfortable inside it's warm it's got a dickinson heater you can be warm. You can pilot from inside. You got Navionics inside, Navionics outside. It's really nice. You got nice livable deck space up top. Nice cockpit. It's really, um, so the more I looked at it, it was like, why, you know, why not? I, I tried to talk myself out of it for a while. Spent a few months digging through the boat before I actually purchased it. And it, it was just, it was, I don't know. It was like a no brainer. I, I, the more I spent time with it, the more I felt like it had good bones. I felt like the steel was really good. Felt like, I mean, besides some TLC, some, some rust and some paint maintenance, what, what could I, what I have to lose? So I, I mean, I made an offer on it and I'm kind of glad, actually really glad today that I have it, but I would say if I had to compare it today to like the, the, the 349 that I was looking at, I mean, there's, it's no comparison. There's no reason I would choose that over this. The interior wood and fit is, it's got real wood. First of all, the fit is way better than a production Jeannot. Uh, 
The downsides would be that it's not a production boat. Like the sails, I have to have custom sails made, you know, stuff like that. The winches, if I go buy a winch, I am not going to, I mean, obviously I can just buy whatever brand winches there up there, but I can't just go order some from the Geno store or little stuff like that. Windows, windows, I'll probably have to have custom cut if anybody ever breaks one or if I have to replace one. All these little skylight windows and all these little port windows, they're all, I mean, I would say they're custom, but they're still harder to find than like a Geno part or um, any other production boat. As for like redundancy and, and travel, if I wanted to travel the world on this boat, it's heavier, it's stronger. I've got 400 gallons of diesel. I've got 375 gallons of fresh water. Um, it's, it's well equipped in that regard. I've got a whole workroom and storeroom. I've got part storage, plenty of storage for dry goods. And you know what I mean? There's, it's, it, it was much more of a blue water world traveling vessel than than a Genoa or any production boat that I was looking at. And then when you when you look at the interior, sure, a Genoa, uh, a production nice newer boat has a nice living room style, apartment style interior, where this is more of like a cave, I'd say it's a little darker, a little more tight. But in a rough sea, or if you're actually gonna like traverse anywhere on this vessel, it's 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 gonna be more beneficial to you it's it's heavier much heavier i've i believe on the documentations and what i was reading it's almost 30 tons so it's definitely not a light vessel by any means takes a little bit more wind it's probably a little slower than as you know probably cruises around six knots but it serves my purpose perfectly i wanted something i could live in I can feel safe for my dogs and and my girl safe for me i feel like i could take it anywhere the it's just kind of exactly what i wanted and i don't think any newer production boat for the price could could really i don't see the the gains from spending three times as much twice as much for what you get in the end as a vessel. I mean, even just having a pilot house makes it really beneficial for me. I mean, if it's wet, if it's disgusting, I can I can be inside and pilot. I don't have to go outside to start anything, you know what I mean? So that's one thing. It is going to be a lot of work. I know this thing, obviously, you got to go through all the equipments, all the electronics. There's more to to it than just buying a new ready to go fancy dancy sailboat and this is not something most people would want it's a lot more work you get a lot of rust up in the, the bulwarks and all the you know just it's a lot more maintenance than a fiberglass boat a fiberglass boat as long as you don't have any you know rotted cores you kind of don't have anything to worry about um, one thing I'll say about this is I wasn't planning on buying a boat ever at all. I kind of, I fell into this. I was literally, you know, watching the whole van life and, and stuff like that. I always thought I would make some type of van life vehicle or some type of like, I don't know traveling four-wheel drive that could go anywhere and this is kind of the perfect of both worlds you get your house you can travel anywhere you've got fresh water you have electricity you I mean there's so much to it this is without me knowing it this was the perfect vehicle for me and my little family i would say I'd love to travel the world in it and see what it's about. Well, other than that, I'd say that's pretty much the reasons of why I bought this 
steel 50 foot sailboat hope you guys enjoyed like subscribe and see you next time